The Latrobe Valley to become home to a world first energy project to convert coal to hydrogen. The Latrobe Valley will become home to a world first energy project converting coal to hydrogen for export to Japan. The Prime Minister says the program will not only create jobs but help improve energy innovation in the future. Emma McCarthy reports. Malcolm Turnbull was flanked by a swathe of ministers and esteemed guests to deliver the good news. This project is going to create 400 local jobs for Latrobe Valley workers. In a world first, the Latrobe Valley's brown coal reserves will be used in a state-of-the-art pilot project. It aims to convert brown coal to liquid hydrogen for export to Japan. The fuel and the resource available in this valley, the abundance of it, the cost of it, it really is something we should be optimistic about. The pilot will see coal from Loy Yang converted into hydrogen before it's transported to the port of Hastings to be liquefied. It will then be shipped to Japan on specially designed vessels. Innovation, exports, all coming together to create jobs for Latrobe Valley workers. Industry heavyweights are praising the announcement's benefits for the bilateral relationship. I think this project is extremely important uh, for uh, the relationship between Australia and Japan in the field of energy security. If the pilot program is successful, the Turnbull government estimates a hydrogen energy supply chain program could inject $8 billion into the Australian economy and it would be headquartered right here in the Latrobe Valley. Our strategic support for this fuel of the future, hydrogen, opens up new possibilities for innovation in energy. Ema McCarthy, Nine News. The state and federal governments are linking up with the Japanese consortium to try to turn the Latrobe Valley's vast reserves of brown coal into hydrogen. The world first project involves a half a billion dollar pilot plant and hundreds of jobs. But as ever, the sticking point is what to do with the carbon emissions. From coal country to so-called clean energy, Victoria's Latrobe Valley is at the heart of a world first project to convert brown coal to hydrogen for export to Japan. It is amazing to think that brown coal here in Victoria is going to be keeping the lights on in Japan. The project will test the feasibility of turning coal from AGL's Luoyang mine into hydrogen, liquefying it at the port of Hastings and shipping it to Japan. This really is the first uh, chapter in a new book for brown coal in the Latrobe Valley. But success on a commercial scale depends on finding a way to capture and store the carbon emissions somewhere like Bass Strait. People who want to develop it know that they have to sort that problem as well and we have confidence that they will. It is critically important that we invest in the energy sources of the future and that we affect the transition from older forms of generation to new forms of generation, and we do so seamlessly. The federal and Victorian governments are each investing $50 million in the trial. It's expected to create 400 jobs in the region, which is still grappling with the closure of the Hazelwood power station a year ago. The politicians will always say there's 400 jobs here or 400 jobs there. Um, reality is uh, we'll see what happens out on the ground. Environment groups have rejected claims the project will promote clean energy, but governments hope it will become a lucrative export industry. The industry uh, by the middle of this century um, is expected to be valued in the trillions of dollars. Money the Latrobe Valley is banking on. Jean Edwards, ABC News, Gippsland. A plan to turn brown coal into clean energy has been given a major cash boost by the federal government. There's also a push to see more renewable power sources in the mix. Phoebe Bowden explains. A new day dawns on Bruni Island and with it news that an experiment in this little Tassie Isle could slash power bills across the country. With customer-owned solar and storage, um, we're able to offset uh, the use of fossil fuels. When tourists flood this isolated island, it usually relies on diesel to generate electricity. But new software can tap into solar panels and batteries during peak demand. The result over Easter was a 30% saving. You get lower electricity prices and you get to have a reliable grid. While the sun shines down on that project, Malcolm Turnbull is battling dark days. Today he visited the Latrobe Valley. Just 48 hours ago, Tony Abbott was there too, spruiking the need for more coal. 
Malcolm Turnbull leads a party that is deeply divided over the mix of renewable energy and fossil fuels. Today he pledged $50 million to a new pilot project that could potentially please everyone. The World First study will look at turning brown coal into hydrogen, which can be used to create clean energy. Now, when we look at the fuel and the resource available in this valley, the abundance of it, the cost of it, it really is something we should be optimistic about. While AGL's boss and the PM found common ground over that project, there's no sign of a truce in their very public spat over a coal power station in the Hunter Valley. There's still plenty of battles to be won in this energy war. Phoebe Bowden, Tano Witness News. Up to 400 jobs will return to the Latrobe Valley as part of a world first pilot project. The Prime Minister was on hand to announce the Brown Coal to Hydrogen project, also making the region a key international player. With the pain of Hazelwood still fresh in Latrobe Valley's memory, 400 jobs will soon return to the beleaguered brown coal industry. This project will ensure there are more jobs for Latrobe Valley workers, not just today, but in years and decades to come. The Prime Minister and an entourage of his Commonwealth colleagues were on hand at AGL's Loy Yang A power station to announce a world first, a pilot project to turn brown coal into liquefied hydrogen. Dubbed as a zero emission fuel, it will be shipped from the port of Hastings to Japan for use primarily in the transport sector. It is critically important that we invest in the energy sources of the future. And this valley is blessed with these resources. Australia is blessed with many resources. And it's incumbent on commercial enterprises like mine to figure out how we can use those resources to the benefit of the economy. The federal government's investing $50 million in the project, collaborating with the Victorian and Japanese governments, as well as a host of Japanese businesses, including manufacturing giant Kawasaki. Your support for the launch of the hydrogen energy supply chain project epitomises the benefits of a genuine partnership between industry and government. While the pilot phase of the coal to liquid hydrogen project starts next year, it won't be known whether or not it can reach a commercial phase until the 2030s. Until then, the Turnbull government plans to bolster the Latrobe Valley economy with a range of grants for local business. 19 Gippsland businesses already successful in applying for the government's regional jobs and investment program. So the $20 million will go a long way in Gippsland and Latrobe Valley. In fact, it's going to generate up to $70 million worth of investment and 1,200 new jobs. So we're saying to them, we're we're backing you, we want you to do well, we want you to invest and that's what they're doing. Louis Gillett, Win News.